On July 4th, 1986, that placed it. Okay, uh, first question. Would you state your full name, please? It's Ronald J. Schultz. Uh, where did this incident occur? It would be, uh, actually on the Baptiste River, on south of the Sun Child Indian Reserve. Uh, what date did this take place? I think the twenty first. Twenty first, Saturday the twenty first. Yeah, twenty first, Saturday the twenty first of October. Was it at night or day? Daytime. Uh, what time of day was it? Ten thirty, approximately in the morning. Uh, just describe the area in which it took place. Was it heavily tree? Was it open ground? Or well, there was lots of bush on both sides. It was heavily treed, and uh, it was right along the main road that goes through there. What distance would you estimate you were from the animal when you saw it? I would say uh, well, between six and 700 yards. Well, what was your first reaction when you first saw it? first reaction was, uh, I thought it was a man that had come out of the bush when I first, when I first seen it. And then after we, after we thought about it for a while, then we just kind of got together on our thoughts and, you know, no man would do that. And, uh, the way he came out and the way he walked and the way he, you know, went along the bush and Support. What was it doing? Well, it looked to me like he wanted to cross the road. But when he when he came out of the bush and he stopped before the road, he, and uh, then he turned to his left and kind of angled back towards the bush, and then just along the edge of the bush, and then he turn to his right, he come back out again, about three, four steps out from the bush, and then I think he saw us, or heard us, or whatever, I don't know, but anyway, he turned, and then he just run right in the bush, he was gone. Did they stand and walk on two legs? Yeah, just two legs, that's all they walked on. Did it ever go down on all fours? Was it covered in hair? The nearest I could see, yes, it was covered. It was black from top to bottom. Completely. Okay, my next question was what color was it? <laughs> uh, how tall would you estimate this thing to have been? Well, according to the bush there, I would say that he had to be at least seven feet tall. Would you be able to estimate how heavy it was? I would want to be guessing because, you know, I would think that he'd be around 250 to 275 pounds possibly in that. Heavier than a man, would you think? I would think he would be a little heavier than a man. Did you notice any of its facial features? Not from that distance. I couldn't see the facial features. Now could you describe the animal's arms, and their length, and how big they were? Well, his arms, uh, like at that distance, they looked pretty, you know, fairly big. But he, when he stood, he kind of stood forward a bit with his upper body, and the arms kind of hung down. And uh, then when he when he run, he run the same way. Like he he run, and it seemed like the arms were just kind of you know, flopping in the wind type of. Could you tell if it was male or female? No. How long did you see this thing for? Well, it would have been... I would think at least uh, 20, maybe 15, 20 seconds anyway. I, I never really thought about the time. Uh, I'd like to have seen it a lot longer, but it wasn't that long.
just a few minutes or well it was like from the time it came out of the bush until it went back into the bush I would think we probably washed it for you know probably a good half to maybe three quarters of a minute for what we you know the length of time the total length of time that we seen it did it make any noise never heard a word did it see you well, there, like I said, I don't know if he's seen us or heard us. Like we were all standing there quiet. Uh, Dirk had the scope on him all the time as soon as he came out of the bush. But uh, I, I didn't get my field glasses on him quick enough. You know, cause I just didn't realize, first we thought it was possibly an old trapper or something that had come out of the bush. But then after we realized that, you know, this thing wasn't carrying anything, it wasn't doing anything, the other one just come out. Do you smell any powerful odor before or during the sight? No. After the creature moved off, did you check for footprints? Yeah, we did. Did you find any? No. We mm. couldn't find any. No nothing. snow on the ground at that time? No, yeah. no snow, and he was actually on the roadside, there was grass there, and then the trail that goes into the bush is all heavy moss. You know, you'd have, in farther you would have maybe four to six inches, eight inches of, of, uh, of moss. Uh, did you report what you saw to uh, any officials or police? No. Uh, did you report it to anyone? Other than my friends, no. And the last question is, first of all, uh, you weren't the only witness? No, I was, there was four of us there. And in your own words, the last question is, describe what happened. Just go through the incident with me and uh, tell me what you were doing and what happened. Well, what had happened is uh, we had gone hunting early in the morning and we had gone into the bush uh, about a mile back and we had walked around um, from the highway or the road that we were on, we walked in around the bush and actually we went in would be to the west and around and then we all met at the river, the Baptiste River um, in the bush and then when we after we all got together there, then we split up again, and uh, myself and my son Robin came out of the bush. We walked up a cut line right up to the highway. And then my other son, Ronnie, he and Dirk went on uh, farther north and worked their way up to another cut line and Ronnie came out then basically behind us uh, on the same trail and then Dirk went up and followed a game trail right up along the river and when he came out at, at the river there he came up onto the highway and in the meantime, I had sent Robin back up the hill to get the truck. So when he he came down, and by this time, like I said, Ronnie was there and myself, and so I just walked across the road and, and uh, started taking some clothes off. And, and uh, then when dirt came out of the, the bush, we, you know, it took us a few minutes there, a couple, three minutes or whatever it was, and then we jumped in the truck and we drove down to where he was towards the, the river. And then we stopped and picked him up. And uh, we were all standing there right beside the truck. We were having a cup of coffee. And the first thing, I'm, I'm not sure which one of the boys uh, or who seen it first, but it, when it came out of the bush, and it just walked out of the bush just like, it was some uh, hunter coming up, and I, like I, didn't know what the heck 
to think because he walked out there and I seen him walk out and he stopped and and was standing there and then he that's when he turned and he uh, kind of meandered back to the bush and then uh, Dirk had the, his rifle there he was still had his rifle out, out there so he put the scope on him and he watched him and he kind of walked down along the edge of the bush a little bit and then he turned and he come out again looked like he wanted to go across the road again now I, I don't know whether we made a noise or whether we whether he seen us or what I don't know but he immediately you know he stood there for for a few seconds I guess and then he immediately turned and run right back into the bush into the these trails so then what we done was we went we drove up there we drove by there real slow we had thought like Dirk uh, uh, thought that possibly it was an old trapper and then we drove by real slow and drove up about three quarters of a mile up the road turned around, come back, and there's no vehicles, no nothing up there. We come back and uh, drove by real slow again, and I looked up the creek, I couldn't see anything up the creek at all. And when you can't see that far up there anyway, but you can see a little ways. So we said, well, we would go up and get the rest of the guys. There was three more uh, hunters there with us. So we went up and got them, and then we come back down again. And by this time, it had to be oh, it must have been 11:30, pretty near. And uh, anyway, we were telling them about this, and of course, one of them said, "Well, you know, maybe it was a you know, these Sasquatches." So anyway, we went down, all work, the whole works of us. We went down there and we literally got down on our hands and knees and, and walked, you know, crawled along where this thing had walked or basically where we thought it had walked. And we couldn't find nothing, absolutely nothing. So then we walked, we went into the bush and checked along the river to see if we could find any tracks or anything along the edge of the river and uh, the only thing that we did find was this log that was laid down and it was you know dead or a dead tree but there was two places on there and I guess it would be you know, four or five feet long there were places there were two places that all the bark had been peeled off the top of this log now there's no very small indentations on there where claws would be uh, <laughs> like a bear uh, usually they tear it you know they maybe I don't know, you'd have to look at it to see um, when you go up there but uh, other than that uh, that was the last I seen of it <laughs> uh, you said um the fellow was with you, Dirk Landy? Dirk Lundy. Lundy. And uh, he had his rifle on it. He had the rifle right on him, right the scope right on him. But he didn't shoot? Uh, no, he did not shoot. Okay. Nearly 14 and one half inches long.